Hello everyone, it's George from Ireland. Here I am on Fitzroy Street in London, and behind me is the house where Matthew Flinders spent some of his adult life. Is not the house where he died. Um, that's now occupied by British Telecom Tower, but it's only like a quarter of a mile that away. Um, anyhow, so Flinders was born in Lincolnshire in um, 1774. That's a county on the eastern coast of England, about halfway up. His uh, father was a surgeon. Um, surgeons were nothing like as well paid or highly trained as they are today. Remember, they used to be known as barber surgeons, which is why surgeons still Mr. and not Doctor. Um, so someone just who could hack off a limb pretty quick. Uh, uh, anyway, so he was, he was still, still reasonably well off and he at least had a secondary schooling, which is more than most people in the, in the 18th century. Um, he read uh, Robinson Crusoe by Daniel Defoe, this uh, fictionalized account of Alexander Selkirk's time as a castaway on some um, uh, distant island. And he decided that he would like to go to sea, which was a rather dangerous thing to do. So um, he entered as a Royal Naval officer. Now, in theory, this was open to people of any social class, but they had to buy their uniform and books when they're training, which precluded most people from joining because they simply couldn't afford all that. Um, so it was reasonably well paid, but you earned your pay because it was hazardous. Obviously, your ship could sink, you could be killed by pirates, you could die of scurvy. There's only just about this time they're making lime juice compulsory because they were starting to understand the importance of vitamin C on these long voyages um, because without them, you'd get scurvy. Um, you could die of tropical diseases in all sorts of places. It was very hard work. It could be broiling hot, um, it could be extremely cold. It's not that they had heating or decent waterproof clothing back in those days. Um, so he made three extended vo voyages to the Indian Ocean and Pacific Ocean uh, and he rose up the ranks in the Royal Navy and he indeed he served up before the mast under a certain Captain Bly and that was after the uh, Mutiny on the Bounty 1789, it was a few years after that and he seems to have got along with Bly reasonably well. Some people believe that Bly's reputation was unfairly traduced by Hollywood because Bly was a man who was inclined to chide rather than flog or indeed to flog rather than to hang. So in fact he was unduly lenient. That was a problem with Bly is his men despised him but they didn't fear him. Um, so kind of the, the worst the worst combination. So back to um, Flinders. Uh, he was on HMS Bellerophon, HMS Scipio, a few other ships, HMS Investigator when he's commanding and then he circumnavigated um, Australia people calling it New Holland, part of it New South Wales, um, and he's the one who invented the term Australia. Um, people had said terra australis incognita, as in unknown southern land. Um, and he also confirmed that Tasmania is indeed a separate island, or Van Diemen's land, as we called it well into the, into the um, 19th century. And the British decided that the country couldn't be known as New Holland, or no part of it, even though the Dutch, indeed the French, had explored it more extensively before the British had. Um, the Aborigines obviously been there uh, tens of thousand years before any European had clapped eyes on it. Um, anyhow, um, uh, Flinders was sailing back across the Indian Ocean, um, knowing but that by this stage, uh, France and the United Kingdom were at war. Um, there had been the Peace of Amiens from 1801 to 1802. Now both sides accused each other of breaking it, simply using it as a breather before recommencing hostilities, so war broke out afresh. Now Flinders was apprised of this, nonetheless he put in for repairs at Lille de France, known as Mauritius to you and I, because he said his expedition had been chiefly scientific in nature, therefore he expected the French would be very sportsmanlike and say, all right, we'll allow you to do that, collect some provisions and be on your way. However, the French governor um, thought, well, I can't possibly allow this, come on, this is a warship in time of war. No, you're taken prisoner. Although he was actually very leniently treated, and uh, he was indeed indicted, invited to dine with the French governor and his wife, but uh, Flinders rebuffed the invitation rather sniffily. Um, so uh, he got on badly with him. But later on, he was allowed to parole to walk around Mauritius. Were they worried about escaping? Well, the sea was, it was a wall, if you will. You're not going to get very far without a ship and you're not going to get onto a ship too easily. There are not many people in Mauritius. A majority of people in Mauritius were, were black at the time. The white was going to stand out. Um, and good luck sailing to the mainland. I mean, it's only about a thousand miles off the coast of Africa. Um, so after six years, he was released. Lucky to get out that soon because the war was still on and came back to this country. Uh, and as I say, he, he died a bit down the street. Well, actually, you can see Telecom Tower, which is roughly on the site of his house. 
and then he was buried in a churchyard a bit north of here, a bit in, the, in this direction towards Euston Station, more or less behind that building. Uh, Euston Station didn't exist at the time. You see, the train wasn't even invented until 1825. And then it was built over um, when Euston Station was, was expanded, and nobody knew where his grave was. It was lost, which is uh, pitiful for such a distinguished man, and so many owe a great deal to uh, the endeavours of Flinders. Anyhow, High Speed 2, a highly contentious project, this high speed railway line from London to Birmingham to Manchester and so forth. Uh, many people say so it's worthless, but one thing it has done is it unearthed his coffin. When they were excavating the ground for the purpose of this new railway line, they found his coffin with a well preserved coffin plate. I'm not sure they did any DNA tests, but they said that they positively identified him and he was reinterred with full naval honours in D Donington, his hometown. The British Australian Society was there to um, celebrate his accomplishments. Uh, and he's, he's, he's um, glorified by many toponyms in Australia bearing his name. So that is Matthew Flinders of the Royal Navy. Isn't there a Flinders River, Flinders Mountain Range? Okay, so I shall switch it off. Toodaloo.